Hello. Well, welcome again to my conversation in, in isolation. Today we have a very special guest who is a friend of mine and uh, he comes from a, what I like to say, a royal family of music, the BGs. He's the son of Robin Gibb. Um, his name is Spencer Gibb. Spencer is a great producer, great songwriter, great engineer, and a super nice guy. Person who is, you know, um, super talented. It's amazing. When I met him, it was about four years ago, I think. And it was instant. It was like, oh my God, this guy is great. Then we did some things together um, in the studio for our students, actually, for U at UNC. Spence, whenever you are ready, man. Hello. What's up, brother? Can you, can you hear me okay? I can. Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you great. I just uh, didn't know if I needed to put my little earbuds in. No, I'm fine. Uh, let me see if I, I, I'll raise my level a little, because I'm, I'm going deaf, as you know. <laughs> like, well, I, as, as, as every producer and engineer is these days. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 you, if, you're, if you're any good at what you do, you need to be deaf. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was telling that to my students yesterday, actually, the same thing. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, still, still dealing with quarantine, coronavirus stuff, you know, just life. Um, I, I think it's, uh, I know we're going to get more into this later, but for me, um, my life didn't change. Fortunately, it didn't change like too much. Um, you know, like I work out of home, especially like with photography stuff and, and writing, and then I have a studio. Um, so I was able to be at the studio for a while before I shut down, which, you know, which we'll get to, but, um, I didn't go to too many places. It was like my house, <laughs> the studio, the grocery store. So but it didn't, other than lack of money, it didn't change too much. I mean, the, the people that I really feel for are, um, you know, my friends that are in like touring bands right now, yeah. um, because of course, you know, and merchandise is so much their revenue. Um, you know, a lot of those people also in the service industry, you know, bartenders, wait staff, and, and it's, it's uh, my heart just breaks for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely a lot more than, uh, than myself or other people that can do some work, even if it's not a huge amount of work. I get that, you know, I, I, I've said it before, but for me, it's been great actually being home and being able to, you know, write music or practice or do whatever I want uh, with my family. But I get it. I mean, a lot of our friends are, are suffering a lot because, you know, they work in the in the gigging industry, playing yeah. concerts, doing things, and there's nothing happening. Um, I lost a few concerts. I lost a couple of festivals with my band, with my big band. But that was about it. I mean, that that's not for me financially. It's not a big hit because I have my my university gig. But you know, I know for a lot of people, this is really really bad. Besides all the problems, you know, all the things we see on the news about people losing people. I mean, losing families, losing friends. Oh, no. I, I I lost two friends actually. I lost two. One of my best friends died at the beginning of the pandemic, and another one died about a month ago. Great producer, Man, great I'm, great songwriter. I'm, yeah, I'm so sorry. I mean, it, it's like it's, um, and and I, wow, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fortunate. I haven't had that experience. I I know now too many people I have, and I think um, it's probably only a matter of time. Yeah. Um, but I was having this conversation with, uh, actually, with my cousin, the other day. Is that the, I think the biggest problem with this virus is we are. Um, it, it's almost, it would be easier. First of all, it would be easier if people weren't politicizing it. Mm -hmm. but secondly, it would be easier if, if it was in a way more severe for everyone. Like the, the fact that, that we're at like 50%, 50 um, um, asymptomatic means that you're in this situation where you could have it and you couldn't yep. know, and then you mm -hmm. spread it yep. to someone and that person could be diabetic or they could be this or they could be that. And that's, yep. that's the hardest part. People, people don't realize that. And exactly, you know, for me, I am pre-diabetic and I am, uh, um, and I have asthma. So that's why I said, when this came out, we said, we are not going anywhere, period. 
my kids went back to school online. I am teaching online at the university. So, you know, it's, it's, oh, Brennan is here. So that's pretty cool. Hi, Brennan. Brennan Baglio. Um, uh, hi, hi, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Spencer, tell me what you've been doing in the, in the last, you know, in this situation, how, how you have been creative and doing things. Um, wow. <laughs> that's a, well, I know I mean, that's a tough one to begin with, but <laughs> unless you want to go somewhere else and then go there. No, no. I mean, uh, one thing I'll tell you, I'll tell you is this, is that I, um, I, I have had, I have had a hard time since all of this happened, um, like writing, like a lot of people have been saying to me, oh man, you must have just been sitting around writing like so many songs. And, and I haven't, I haven't really felt um, the, you know, I, I haven't felt that inspiration to yet, okay. um, which, is, which is fine because I've got other projects to work on. Um, so, you know, we, so my cousin and I are uh, with putting out a project uh, later this year, we're called the Ghost Twins, and we recorded an EP. Um, we started last year. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you the backstory for it. In fact, she's. Uh, I can't see who's typing because uh, uh, it just disappears. I don't know like if she's here yet. I haven't seen her actually. I think she's she's going to be around somewhere, so I'm sure she'll in interject some kind of snarky, sarcastic comment. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, but so you know her and I you know we've, we've both been solo artists for you know for a long time when I when I'm I was sorry no chance there she's yeah I see I can actually see <laughs> just the tip of, of, of that and then it disappears so um, we we had done a so yeah we both had our own careers I was in a band 54 seconds for a long time which some people watching would know about then I went solo um, but Sam and I have always been close and, you know, we've always been musicians uh, and we ended up coming together for a project that, that she had put together, which was sort of a tribute to our, to our family. And um, I recorded a track and then there was some, uh, you know, another track, which was a bunch of, a, a bunch of us. Um, and, and we had a good time working on it. Uh, that really allowed us to reconnect as, Thanks. you know, as, as people. Um, so, and then we ended up getting together for the holidays and we started writing a song and then it was just one of these things like, why haven't we ever done this before? Like, <laughs> this is just really, like, really stupid that we hadn't done it before. So we wrote a song and she lives in Ohio. So we scheduled a time for me to go up there and we wrote, uh, then, so we got three songs out of it in a really short period of time. And it was just like, just beautifully effortless. I came back to Austin to my studio and, uh, and me and, and Jeff Bada, who uh, uh, I run the studio with and is also an incredible drummer. You know, we put together, um, we put together some basic tracks, like basic to the point where we could then go down to Florida and work with Samantha's, with, work with Samantha was going to Florida to visit her folks and uh, her production partner, Laz Rodriguez, works down there so we did all of our vocal arrangements down there and then more overdubs back in austin and then it was just this um uh this you know sort of like you know crazy ride and then we started rough mixes and then and then then we're into covid which is really sort of um what i was uh, uh actually i see sam popping up she's like hey I'm here. She's she's um, she, she's probably going to say that all of everything I'm saying is bullshit. She's just gonna do <laughs> like that is not the story. That is not how it worked. That is <laughs> you did. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, um, but to, but to put it on, um, you know, b before you ask any questions about it. Um, yeah, see, she's saying right now, long time coming, but it felt really easy. Um, and yeah, that's, you could read a lot into that humorously, but she's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it was just, 
uh, it was it was creepy, and that sort of ties in with our name, the Ghost Twins, is that it was just there's this twin-like energy and like finishing each other's sentences, and when that happens when we get together and we haven't seen each other for a long time, too, like we just we click as as people, um, and then when we write and and record and, and, and singing is is super creepy because we, you know unlike our parents, we didn't grow up singing together. But the moment you put a microphone in front of us, it just, oftentimes it sounds like one voice, which is just like mm -hmm. nutty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it creeps us both out for sure. But your parents were twins. Yes, yes. And that's part of the net, part of the ghost twins name is a, is mm -hmm. a reference to, um, to that. Um, but yeah, we, but you know, I know I've, um, unfortunately for everyone watching, um, uh, Socrates has uh, heard the material. <laughs> so, I have, and I was going to yeah. talk about it. <laughs> yes, so um, so sorry, everyone. You'll you'll hear it soon enough. Um, so I, I know you've got things you want to ask, but before before we go there, um, I wanted to talk about you know the the mix process during COVID because it was it was a really bizarre thing and something that uh, I'd never done before. Um, so we had, so all of a sudden we're in quarantine, you know, it's like the start of March. Uh, it varied from around the country, but here in Austin, we went into lockdown pretty hard, kind of around the same time as California did. And that pretty much meant having to shut down my studio. And I'd been mixing and sending stuff to, to Samantha. Uh, she of course had notes. And as you know, as a mixer, you know, it's not one little thing, one little note doesn't mean you just change one thing on a fader. Or it, 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 on the side. <laughs> right, As, and especially, and we'd, we've got a lot of strings and horns. We'd done stuff with, with Ludek Grissel in, uh, in Prague with the Czech Philharmonic. So, um, you know, everything shifts when you've got like 150 tracks, uh, everything, everything shifts. So we were like, Ah, you know, what are we going to do? All of a sudden, I don't have a studio. But uh, Laz, her production partner in Florida, his studio is in his house. And so came up with this idea of like, I was close to being done. So I rented out stems. Okay. For those of you that are engineers and producers, you would know what that is. But the individual, uh, you know, individual stems. So um, pretty much full drums, but compressed and EQ'd the way they were sounding. Then guitars in one place, but pans, all of the background vocals, all of the lead vocals. So, you know, probably about, he got probably about 30 to 40 stems out of, uh, uh, you know, out of 150 tracks. Like say, I would break down the strings into smaller amounts and pre-mix them. It's funny, keep, keep that number up, 150 for later. Let's keep talking about it later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because it was, um, well, and it's definitely, it's probably the most vocal tracks too that we'd, um, that, that I've ever worked with because it was, um, like I've worked with a lot of orchestra before and that, that really fills things up. But uh, Samantha and I kind of recorded vocals sort of like the way our parents did where it was like we doubled and triple tracked a lot of stuff and all of the background vocals and there's all of this call and response. So they have to be on different tracks and pan what she says. So is that what, did she just say that? No, she says, had to, had to figure a lot, a lot out to help do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we really did have to, have to figure a lot out. Um, and and I, was, I was definitely pushing the limits of my computer and once once Laz started working on it, it was pushing the limits of his to We had a lot of crashes because I had literally 50 or 60 vocal tracks. Wow. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, we, we sort of hit this roadblock and I'm like, all right, well, if I make these stems, then Laz can finish the mixes. So send them down to him, Dropbox, thank God we have that. You know, we talked. We talked about this before. You know, ten, fifteen years ago, we wouldn't have been able to do any of this. Um, and sent them down to him. He started reassembling what I had like started mixing. Um, where does it? 
Sam just said not very computer savvy. Is that, is she talking about herself? That is, that is definitely true. Um, <laughs> she's, if she's talking about me or Laz, then, you know what? <laughs> Read my lips, woman. So, uh, <laughs> um, so, um, so send the stems down to Laz. He starts mixing them. Um, and then, this, this, so between Zoom, which of course everyone's using now, and this like incredible piece of software called Audio Movers, um, which I know you know a little bit about, but for those out there, I've got to share it because it's, it's life-changing. It's, it's a plugin that you can put on, you can put it onto any track you want and you can record back and forth in real time through the internet. Um, but you can also put it on your stereo bus and and then it creates an automatic like uh, real time like FTP that you can log into from another computer and you can hear, and, and it doesn't matter what the resolution is either. So if you're, you know, if you're at 4824, you hear it in 4824. And, um, and so I was able to listen and, and so was Samantha, you know, we were able to listen to tweaks and things that Laz was doing uh, and then um, between the three of us, we finished the mixes over the course of, you know, like two or three more weeks. And then Laz reduced those into other stems, like smaller stems. So at this point, basically stereo drums and bass and, you know, and again, guitars all together and pans the way we'd already mixed them virtually. And then they went back to me because I have an analog sum mixer and I was also uh, working with um, uh, with Universal Audio Luna, which just came out. And so here's a shameless plug for Universal Audio. Thank you guys so much for all of your help and for uh, listening to my my bullshit when I call you screaming. <laughs> they they are uh, amazing. They are, they are really great, actually. <laughs> They, they really are amazing. The only thing that, that of course sucks because Luna was a brand new software and I took the plunge to try and use it um, right as, you know, at this point we're deep into lockdown and they cut, they cut their customer service hours down. Like, yep. uh, so there I was with a bunch of questions with this brand new software and no one to ask that. <laughs> like, um, and, <laughs> You know, I mean, and meanwhile, that's, you know, it's like I'm freaking out because I don't want any more computer problems. And, you know, and of course, then, you know, we're all distanced from each other. And then, you know, Samantha's like, how's it going with the mixes? And I'm like, yeah, I'm having some problems. I'm, uh, um, but anyway, we, we got it done. Um, they, uh, I think they, they, they came out great. We were all very happy. They went off to, Emily Lazar, who is just a legendary mastering engineer, um, love love her. And one of one of the reasons that I picked her is because she does a lot of work with. Um, I've worked with her before, but I'm really used to a supervised mastering session, and you can't do that these days. No. So, yeah, and it's a real, you know. Um, you know, because one of the most common things you get asked for in mastering, especially if something's a little weird, is someone will ask you, did you mean to do that? Um, and, you know, like in, in, in this particular case, I was using my Dangerous Music analog sum mixer. Okay. And, and the, Neve, uh, the Neve sum mixer inside Luna. And I was using nice. them in tandem. But what I got out of that was I was, I was really pushing the... Um, I was really pushing the overall harmonics on the Neve, and that was creating some overs. But because it was going through the analog sum mixer, when I brought it back, um, you could, there were some overs, but mm -hmm. I couldn't hear them. So it, it didn't matter. My, my attitude was if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, plus, I was already starting to lose my hearing. I couldn't tell whether the mixes were any good at that point. I was totally relying on Samantha and Laz for it to be, for them to be like, no, this is great, don't change anything. So, so basically what I'm doing right now is blaming them, if, if, it, so, if it sounds crappy. <laughs> <That's>... Disclaimer. 
Yeah, it's absolutely disclaiming. You get to the point where you just, yeah, you know, like just uh, can't, uh, um, can't hear this anymore. Um, so, but yeah, but um, Emily's people called me at one point and said, do you realize there are overs on this? And I was like, I do, but I couldn't hear them. They weren't doing anything digital. So um, they are intentional. If you, um, <laughs> she just called me, she just called me a dickhead. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, um, uh, it's, I am, it's true. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I know uh, you. <laughs> yeah, they know me. Yes. Uh, so it ended up working like, yeah. So I told them it was deliberate and I was like, Hey, look, if you've got a problem with those overs, um, because I didn't hear any clipping, then I will re-render them for you, you know, everything like a DB lower. But, and then they just told me, no, it's fine. We were just concerned. So I was like, all right. And then when the masters came back, we got the, we got the first references and uh, we loved them. Like, you know, um, again, I was too close to it at that point. I'd just been mixing like three days before. Mm -hmm. Sam and Laz loved it. Um, I loved I loved what I heard in terms of how things were smoothed out. Um, and it still sounded very much like the final mix. So, um, and I trust Emily. But yeah, but where I was going with that is one of the things that she does uh, is she works with stems, with stem mastering if, uh, if she needs to. So, I, I picked her for that reason. And I actually sent her a lot of stems, like just in okay. case she needed to fix something that I wasn't there for. Uh, she and never in ended up needing In this situation, that's, that's an actual safe approach to take. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was because, yeah, it's like you can't travel, can't get on a plane to mm -hmm. New York with hard drives. You can't do, I don't even think she's in New York City anymore. I think she's like, out of like Westchester, sort of more in the country. Um, so that would have been even harder to get to her. Plus she's not doing supervised sessions. So yeah, I just kind of threw the kitchen sink at her. She didn't need them. She used the stereo finals. Um, okay. she, she was happy with them. Um, we've, we've got them back and uh, we're, we're starting to, um, basically we're just starting the process of shopping around to the people we want to work with to get this released in the fall and um, uh, th there's there's definitely um, oh Kit LaRue uh, she just asked if stems akin to a source file um, no they're um, they're not Stem, stems are basically just because basically stems are uh, individual components of of a mix Top so mixes, a mix almost Right, you're right. Most of the time, yeah, most of the time it's a sum mix or it's like, or, you know, or it's a bus or an aux, um, you know, a stem could be most, yeah, most of the time it's like stereo drums, they're a stem, um, you know, maybe all of your guitars are a, are a stereo stem. One, but, one stereo track for all the guitars, one stereo track for all yes. the, whatever instruments you need. Yeah, and you, and you pre-mix those so that they sound good by themselves and then you fine tune them elsewhere i mean that's usually um you know i know that it's different for some people like when ludek does uh music for film and he sends stems to uh, uh to sound mixes for the film itself sometimes he literally separates everything out so it's like each indi individual instrument he renders out as a mm -hmm. you know as a file that has the plugin embedded in it and um so sometimes he's stuck with, you know, 150 tracks that he's got yeah. to render out of stems. Um, so. One thing, one thing that Spencer mentioned, well, I listened to the album great, to the, to the EP, and it sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you me. have great songs. I mean, your singing is amazing. You guys, you and Sam both. Uh, like you said, you. you sound like one, and that's pretty cool. Actually, the first Thank time you I so heard much. you live singing, was in the studio. Nobody knows this, of course. It was you and me in the studio by ourselves, just talking. You went to the piano, you started singing. It's amazing how your voice sounds like your family, like, you know, like the entire, like you guys. It was like, oh my God, his voice sounds like, again, of course, 
it's, it's amazing. And the way you put it together on that album, it's great, man. It's great. So it's, it's I think, really yeah, amazing. there's really something magical there. And, it, and, and what is cool about it is I do think that for people who know who we are, you can definitely, first of all, you can tell that we're related. Um, like the Samantha and I are related. And of course, if you know us deeper and you know who our parents are, of course, you can hear things, you know what I mean? Like where we could sound a little bit like, you know, each of our dads or our uncles or, you know, there are those, but I mean, it's genetics that it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm, of course. Um, but, but, you know, like there are funny little stories about, um, uh, like about recording this, there was one day, which this kind of shows you like how in sync we were, is we were doing vocal arrangements in Florida and it was just her and I and, and Laz Rodriguez. And we, uh, Sam, had, Sam had to go. Um, so she had, she had to leave uh, for some reason. Um, and right, and so I was right behind her and right as I was about to leave, I realized that there was a vocal part that she hadn't put down, like a background vocal part. And I didn't want to forget it because it suddenly hit me, like the idea for it. So I sit down. So I'm like, last one, one last thing. Let me just, you know, let me just sing Sam's part. So when we came back the next morning, she could sing, she could re-sing it. And she could listen to my reference. So I sang her part as a falsetto just as a reference track. And um, and then Laz just looks at me and he goes, Sam doesn't need to re-sing it. You sound just like her there. <laughs> and it's in there, yet you can't tell. And she's she did a couple of similar things with me where you, like I, I challenge anyone to, uh, uh, on, a, on a couple of the songs, to, to especially when we're singing in the same register, to tell me who's actually singing at, at what point. There are a couple of moments there that are, uh, that are kind of magical like that. That's pretty cool, man. Well, you know, you can hear that. You can hear the connection actually on, on that album. Um, the music is great. Like I said, the, 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 did, it, did you do the arrangements or, or did Ludic do the, the, the orchestrations? Ludic did the orchestrations. Um, okay. Yeah, so we did. So yeah, we finished basic tracks and we, I wanted to make sure we had the vocal arrangements done before Ludic got them so that he, you know, he could be guided by things. Um, and, and there were some other instruments that got played, like there was, there was some guitar parts that got played that sort of would help lean Ludek in a certain direction. Uh, but that was it, we kind of kept it relatively simple. Um, in fact, especially when we got to mixing, we ended up removing a few things that were just too busy. Like there were, there were so many cool ideas that went into, uh, into it there were some guitar parts uh that got scrapped there were a couple of uh sort of keyboard parts that got scrapped um uh, as as it does uh but we yeah so then it went to ludak and then we went to prague because him and i have recorded there um with them a bunch of times and we were supposed to be there recording a movie anyway and that fell through okay so we already so the session was kind of already booked uh so yeah did that um of course by the way, by the way, we, we are talking about ludek driscoll ludek is yes. my colleague at unc he's a professor of uh film scoring at unc where i teach all the music technology stuff of course um he's a great great composer great orchestrator i'm sorry keep going yeah well yeah and it's also how for everyone out there it's also how socrates and i know each other because i um i came up for when Ludek first started mm -hmm. his um, film scoring program at UNC, I went up there almost immediately to um, to help him uh, with put an orchestra together for a movie, but also for remember that um, we were, we recorded one of the songs um, for the Gibb Collective record that Samantha put together, the one where we reunited and we would pay tribute to our families. Nice. So, so one of the songs that I did for that, we, d we did the orchestra in that session at UNC. Oh, nice. I didn't know that actually. Yeah. 
yeah, we just threw it in because there was a possibility it was going to be related part of the movie. And, you know, and then things from that movie fell apart. And um, as thing, everything with the movie does, it seems to. Um, <clears throat> there are all these little hearts that are going up the side and it looks like there's smoke in my office. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we uh, uh, so yeah, so that's how I met you. And then for everyone uh, listening, I've since then come to, um, I've gone up to Greeley, uh, Northern Colorado a bunch of times. I've done guest lectures. I've, I've done um, uh, production classes for and with Socrates. I've done, you know, I did the rock and roll history classes with Frank Cook. That was, that was, that was fun. Of, they were a lot we of fun. Did, we, did, we did an entire recording session with our students, you and I. Well, I engineered yeah. for you and you, you produced, it was live. Here, here's what we did, guys. We decided to go old school, using the newer yeah. technologies, but we decided not to undo anything. It was like working. Yeah, as if, it was, as if it was tape. That was the idea. Yeah. 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 And we did it. And we, we, we got a song. Uh, one of your songs that Sam yeah. was Alex Bird and Sam Costigan actually were the singers. Well, yeah, and 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 I I really put uh, Sam Costigan under the um, under the gun because I I bought her. I mean, and she knows this, and if she's watching right now, she's gonna be like, yeah, that that was a pain in my ass. Um, <laughs> but I I I really wanted her to co-produce the session with me. Because I really, because I'd already worked with her in Austin, and just thinks that she's just got such a great producer's ear, and I really wanted her. I, she really does, yeah. And I really wanted her to get to know you, so that was me trying to sort of like force you guys to to get to like you know. I wanted you to see how amazing she was. Well, and I can uh, tell you something. I can tell you something. I didn't I didn't know her before that, but then after that, she took all of my courses. I know. And yeah. she did amazing. I mean, she's oh, yeah. really, really, really talented. If she's listening, I am, you know, you know how I feel about you. Uh, you are talented and she's, you know, an amazing singer. By the way, she has a, an album coming out too yeah. this month. Look look yeah. for it, it's Sam Costigan. Yeah, look for Sam it. Costigan. And you can find her on Instagram and probably, it's probably the same everywhere else. Um, it's Sam Costigan Music um, on Instagram. Uh, yay! And I yeah, can. and and the two songs that she's released are just, just absolutely stunning. Um, uh, I think the album I believe is called uh, January May, so you can you'll be able to find that on Spotify. But if you follow on iTunes, but if you follow her, um, she'll you'll she'll give you that information. Yep. Um, and you know she's amazing. Follow her. She's amazing. Yes, yeah, she, she won't be disappointed. She's one of the most talented people I know and just like love her to death and so proud of her. Um, and if we, um, uh, uh, and, and if we have time later on, I'll, I will tell you the story of how, uh, how Sam Costigan is connected to the Ghost Twins. Actually, let's go there, let's go there. You wanna go there? Okay. Yeah, go for it. Cause that's so, a cool one actually. Both yeah, because I know you know the story. Yeah, two two Sams, which is like you know just um, uh, so so Sam Costigan has a um, she has another band called Five Weeks that she uh, started with her friend Cody, who's also incredibly talented, like just an amazing guitarist. The guy's like a machine. Like, you know, he plays, if he, he's one of those, he's one of those like freaky guys, if you double track him, um, like the, both takes are like pretty much identical. They don't really have that, that chorus that you're looking for. It's like, really? Like we didn't need to double track. Like he was just, you know, he's just on. So, um, uh, so anyway, yeah, this is before, before we did the track, for the masterclass in Colorado, I'd already started working with them because I'd gotten to know Samantha through Ludek and she's from Texas. And she was like, hey, would you produce some tracks for us if you, um, uh, in, in the summertime, which now is, is like three years ago. And I will put a disclaimer out there that that record still is not finished and it's not because <laughs> I'm a lazy bastard. Um, but it's because, well, COVID happened this year, 
but then a lot of other things got in the way and the, the studio got really really busy so there will be there will be a five weeks record like very very soon because it's like that close to being mixed um but so sam and cody came into the studio they have this amazing song called ghosts and the reason that Sam and Cody are called Five Weeks is because they were born on exactly the same day, the same year, um, in two different hospitals. I, and I hope, Sam, I hope I'm getting this story right. Um, the two different hospitals and their parents, their mothers were best friends. And when they met for the first time as babies, they were five weeks old. So that's, and they've been best friends ever since. That's so, so good. Yeah, super, super cool, super cute. Okay, she's saying I got it right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think Cody was born in Austin, which is, um, I know he's got family here. So yeah, they have different hospitals. Um, but they have this amazing song called Ghosts. And Jeff Barter, my, my studio partner, uh, and I started nicknaming uh, Sam and Cody the Ghost Winds. So that's what we would call them. And, that, and we would talk about it because they were born on the same day and they had this song called Ghosts. And it just, went, it just went around and around for a couple of years. And then, and I really tried to push that name on them because I just thought it sounded really cool. And I, they were just really happy with five weeks. They were really used to five weeks. And uh, so, like, we didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Well, Samantha Gibb, my cousin, we would come, we'd, we'd started writing songs already. We were talking about names for, uh, for a band or, or a duo. You know, we were stumped on something. And then uh, my girlfriend at the time, who we were actually also working with, whose name is also Sam. Like, <laughs> seriously, like, I couldn't, there were too many Sams in my world for about, you know, when, I mean, I guess there still are, but I was working with everyone at that time, yeah. not now. So it was just like, um, so I'd be like, Sam, and then someone would be like, Sam who? But like, oh, cousin Sam, and then there was Colorado Sam, and then there's like, girlfriend Sam. It was just like, oh, fuck. So, you know, um, we, we did, uh, so, um, uh, so yes, yeah, Samara, uh, she said to me, she's like, maybe you guys should be the ghost twins like it's like it's perfect for you guys you know your dad your dads were twins you know um uh, but you know the ghost things work because you know you know like you're not you're not actually twins and you know it just sounds cool you know mm -hmm. it's got an eerie spooky thing um and uh um so yeah so my girlfriend sam who's actually samara and not samantha she she had bought it up. I I ran it by Samantha um, she, Gibb. She loved it. Um, it just worked. Like it just clicked with us immediately. Like and so then at that point I needed to call Sam Costigan and ask her like if it was cool because um, I've been pitching it even though I didn't think they were that excited. I still had to ask her. So. I called her and she was like, oh my God, take it. It's so much better for you guys than it is for us. And like, please, please. And we were just like, oh yeah. Like it just all kind of like fell into place. So there was this <laughs> name that was lingering around for a little while. And I it's feel like it all, it's a great name. For you great guys, because you know, when I hear the name first, when you send me the, the, the tracks and everything, I thought it was because you, you are so close together. You are on your cousin. And you sing so you know so well together. That's what I thought. And then you told me this story. It was like it's even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. I'm 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 glad that I'm glad that I can tell it like on a forum like this because it's not the kind of thing that you could. It's not the kind of story you could you, you'd ever have the time to tell on you know on Colbert. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is probably the only time we'll ever discuss that story, unless Samantha and I are doing like a crazy long interview and just and, and bantering. But there was, um, but but you know the fact that there was this twin element that you know combined everything, and and that that name got to get used, and it, we really embraced it, and it really feels like us, like as an entity. So that's really, um, 
it makes me makes me really happy it makes it keeps the faith that certain things happen for a reason yeah i know yeah, i know that's hard hard to believe this year for most people but you know well you know hopefully it will change at some point i mean it has it has to change we can't go lower well let me not, not say that <laughs> yeah don't say that yeah <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it'll be it'll be okay later. But I know it, now it's hard. Period. Now for me, it's the same. You know, for me, I, I mean, I've been in the studio in my home studio a lot these days. That's what it is, and practicing a lot. You know, doing things in the house, uh, in the studio. I I went to the studio at UNC only once in the last five months. Wow. I'm going next week to do a little thing there, but that's about it. Um, because you know, it's it's different. It's different now. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I mean, and how many other like is everything uh, is everything online this semester? Like a hundred percent? Well, we went. The, the, they gave us the, the the option. All of my classes are online because of my condition. Let's say I decided to right. do everything online, and I but I'm, I'll go to the studio one or two times over the semester. If I can keep the distance and keep masks, everybody in, I I should it should be fine. Um, it's, it is open, the campus is open, but they, in the School of Music, we decided to cancel the choirs, cancel the big bands. Thanks for the question, Derek. Uh, sure. Actually, Lab One, the, the top big band is the only one that is actually rehearsing. And they, what they did is they, they have, they're in the concert hall, the new concert hall, and they took the entire stage for the band. They are separated oh, wow. and they have monitors and they have all the stuff to make it work. Um, it's you know it's different definitely it's it's different, but I'm doing online from here now. The good thing for us, as we talked about yesterday, is that you know we are we this is the kind of world we live in technology. So to go from this to Zoom to do things is not too hard, but many yeah. teachers are suffering today because they have no idea what to do with their you know with their teaching. Uh, Derek Lab. Two and three are now. Lab one is the only one rehearsing, actually. So, Spence, do you want to go to questions from people? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Yes. Let, let's see what we have. Spencer, I, I'd hire you to, to work on my album if I thought I could afford you. Well, I, I, I'd really love to know what someone thinks I charge, because that's like... Uh, <laughs> Like, um, I think it depends on the record, and I think it depends on how much money you've got. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Kit says K-12 teachers caught hell. They were lost. They were. You know, my wife teaches K-5, but she's mm -hmm. technology savvy, too. So for her, it was easy. So, and then we have our son. Our son is a, a superb musician. He's 17 now. And he knows all but the is stuff. He, is he really? He's seven. He's seventeen already. Seventeen. And he's taller than me now, man. Oh shit! I get that makes sense because I guess I met him four years ago. That was when yep. it was the freshman class. Wow! And he was wrapping cables in the studio. Yep. And now he's wow. ready. To, he has a new a new thing that he put out on on YouTube. It's Proto Cosmos from from wow. Alan Pasqua and and Alan Holdsworth, and it's his version of that. Pretty cool. Look it up, Liam Garcia. He has amazing stuff on, on. He's an amazing guitarist. He's only 17 though, so he's going probably to Berkeley, I think, next year. I oh, think. that's cool. We'll see. Now we have a question. Do you have a favorite track you've recorded, Sherry Brown? Do it. Oh, hi, Sherry. <laughs> um, well, of course. Duh. I mean, the Ghost Wind stuff. Jesus. Like it's always the, it's always your new stuff. Come on. <laughs> Duke Ellington said that actually. Duke Ellington said my favorite chart is my next one. Yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, the funny story. I will answer that question. But there's there's a, a funny story. Um, it's just it's a very British thing. Um, like, or like the era of British artists that were like. Um, uh, you know, like, or like my parents' generation, like my, you know, the, the Gibb brothers is, and I would watch my dad do this all the time. I, I don't know, I don't know if, if Morris and Barry were as, as bad about it, but my dad was definitely like 
hardcore about it is that, you know, he'd, we'd be at an event or something and someone would come up to him and talk about a song that, and he'd be out promoting the latest record and someone would come up and just want to talk about this one song that he'd recorded like 10 years before, or even five years before or something from the late sixties. And he would just look at them and be like, but what about the new stuff? And that was like, that's something that like all of those guys do. Like I've met so many of those, those artists from like that, but even like sort of new ones. I remember my friend, um, uh, Earl Harbin, who's a legendary drummer. He was playing with The The for a while. And I love The The. Like I grew up on that, their stuff and they came through Austin. Uh, and so I was backstage with them and I got to meet all of them and it was so lovely and so sweet. And, you know, I'm shaking their hands and I'm talking to the singer. And I was like, man, I was like, you know, soul mining got me through my early teens. And he goes, really? Well, what about the new record? <laughs> I'm just like, wow, dude. <laughs> like, I just, I'm, I'm blowing so much smoke up your ass right now. Um, that, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, like, I love, um, I'm really, obviously, I'm really proud of the Ghost Twin stuff and, and the, the, the places that it can take us to um, are, are really cool because it sounds like both Samantha and I, but it's also different. Yeah, um, yeah I heard that. And, and the yeah, songs and we, are and we, solid. You know, the songs are solid. We're, we're really, we're re thank you so much. And we're really proud of the songs too. Like a lot of our, um, uh, a lot of our heart went into them. Um, like we, we would just both, as we were writing, we were both very much on the same wavelength um, with our emotions. So there, there, are, there are little things in there that are just sort of, that are personal to us that other people wouldn't necessarily pick up on, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, and one of the things that, that we've talked about a bunch and, you know, Samantha brought it up, um, you know, earlier in the year when we, when we went into lockdown, um, is there, um, lyrically, but we wrote those songs last year, but each one of those songs in, in its own right references sort of what we're going through right now. And um, especially with quarantine and lockdown and, um, uh, you know, so it, part of that made us a little sad, but mm -hmm. the other part of it made it, made it as to where like, okay, we achieved something. We created this, this relevance with our metaphors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that, uh, like if, if, like if we'd have released this stuff, you know, earlier, everyone would have thought we just wrote the whole thing about like, you know, quarantine and, and, and I mean, even like one tune, you could even equate with, you know, sort of protests and, and unrest um, and, and just, you know, systemic bullshit that's going on right now that, that, um, that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So um, I, so yeah, I'm definitely really, really proud of that. And again, it was so, um, 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 yeah, so obviously we created something kind of universal as like, like we, you know, um, you know, we, we think so. Um, well, you uh, know, I think you should be proud of that album. I mean, it, it's oh, well done. It's oh, really well oh his Sam just, Sam just pointed out that, um, that I was shit to work with, but it all worked out. Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, like, I think that's, I think that's, that's fair. I mean, um, I, I've been talking about how lovely she was to work with this whole time. And, but that's because I'm a professional. That's, that's why, like I can, you know, I don't go on forums and badmouth people when, when they really are terrible to work with. I, you know, like I'm being professional right now, Samantha, okay? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we're really proud of those songs. <laughs> um, I think, and um, there's, um, you know, and, and other stuff, like, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm still very proud of Let's Start Over, my last solo record. Um, and, you know, the work that went into that and there, there are just the overall vibe and the sound of it um, was 
and working again with Ludek in Prague. And, you know, there, there are songs that I'm, you know, close to my heart because they're personal. I mean, that was very much like an intense, like breakup record. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are things that, you know, like Empty Room, I'm really proud of. That, that also has one of my favorite guitar solos I ever played. And I think, I think you, you as a guitar player, you know, you've got these closet little songs where you're like, oh yeah. 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 Um, especially, especially ones that you played in like one take. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes which, it's, it's not the, more, the more, most technical or whatever. It's like, it's what it is. Oh, absolutely. And those are the best for me, totally. And that's the solo on Empty Room was like that. I did it in one take. Um, and then actually, I mean, there was a couple of others in, in my past, but then there was one that I did for, uh, there was never supposed to be a guitar solo there, but on the Gib Collective record that, that I did with Samantha and my cousins, um, there's a song on there called Please Don't Turn Out The Lights. And I, I helped do some arrangements on it. I played some keys and, and I did like a string arrangement. And there was this little gap in the middle and I was like, I'm going to play a guitar solo on this. But um, again, Laz Rodriguez, who we talked about earlier, he was he was mixing it. So I was just sending him stems now that everyone knows what stems are. So, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so I did my in my in fact, in this room, in my little this is my little home office slash writing room. Um, I did the, the lead vocal on that song for my sections, some background vocals, uh, some keys. Uh, string arrangements and then there was this spot for a solo so just really kind of to just be as a bit of a joke and a bit of a jerk I I put this guitar solo down in one take because I just thought it would be and they came back and they were like oh we love the solo and I was like god really all right uh, and I really love it I really do so, and it's and now and there's a music video for it online where I had to of course actually recreate the solo you have to learn the, the video <laughs> Yeah, there's a whole section of the video. This is my karma. There's a whole section of the video where I'm playing the solo. Like, um, so I had to learn the solo that I did in one take, which, as you know, is that's harder because you because there's weird little flubs and things. Yeah, you know? like yeah. so. But yeah. Well, okay, let me tell you something because uh, we might we have about six more minutes on this one. If you want to, and everybody's. Willing to, willing to come, we can go back to another live right after and do a little more if you want to. Oh, what does it cap out at an hour? Yeah. Okay, we can keep going a little more if you want to. We can do, I mean, if it, if it, let's run it out and then we can go back and do five more minutes and say yeah. goodbye. How's, let's do that. that. Let's yeah. do that so people know. Now, do we have, an, do you have an anticipated release date for that, for the album? Sorry? That's another question. Do you have an anticipated date for releasing the with, album? With, 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 we're looking at the fall. Um, we're looking at, um, we're looking at a, a possible single release earlier than that. Um, so, uh, and then, you know, maybe other singles, but again, it's a three song EP. So we're, we're debating that. We're looking at, we, we are hoping for like, like a November period for, the EP, um, but again, we're about to start working with some people who can um, sort of uh, hopefully give us some guidance in terms of timelines. Um, but we are gonna, we are definitely gonna be making announcements fairly soon about things. Cool. Um, I know, I know, we've been for like for everyone out there that's frustrated by this. Um, a, that's good, but keep following us on social media. Shameless plug because you're going to see things on the Ghost Twins page that you're not going to see on my page and you're not going to see them on Samantha's page. It's exclusive concert. Follow the Ghost Twins and then we'll give you cool announcements. If you don't follow us, you'll never know until there's a, until there's a huge billboard in your neighborhood. <laughs> now, there's a question in Spanish. I'll translate it for you. Um, how do you get your vintage sound in your music? What elements add to that? sound you create with your music oh that's a great question um actually um i'll, I'll definitely try and simplify it because you know this production techniques um, um i mean first of all i'm a really big fan of like organic instruments so you know and if you record certain things especially like drums and guitars the right way you can automatically get that 
that kind of flavor. Um, and, and of course, you know, words like, like vintage and retro are sort of misleading because, you know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a 60s sound? Are we talking about a 70s sound? And then again, mm -hmm. what genre, you know, like I've got, I've got a good friend here in Austin who, um, uh, who is, you could describe as retro, but what she's doing has a very sort of like late eighties, top 40 pop feel. Um, I'll, I'll plug her. Um, uh, uh, her name is Primo the Alien, but she's, it's very synth wave based, but it's, but it's pop, beautiful songs. And, but she, you know, she doesn't do anything really with organic instruments. It's all, you know, okay. uh, vintage stuff, but, uh, but it's very, so again, it's, it's a little misleading, but in terms of, um, you know, instead of calling it a vintage sound, like definitely more of an organic sound. Like I think there are microphone techniques that you can use. Um, I'm also a big fan when it comes to mixing, especially of like, you know, um, using stuff, well, tracking, using certain things on the front end that are like, you know, tried and true. You know, like I've got, I, I use a bunch of the, the LA610s with the preamp with the LA2A built in. You know, it's like uh, Laz Rodriguez, he, you know, he uses uh, API stuff. You know, it's like stuff that's been around for a long time and that doesn't, dis doesn't disappoint. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. And then on the back end, I use all of the universal audio stuff. Which so, are great. you know, it sounds great. Yeah, and I've been working with them for a long time. So I've got um, uh, I've got my go-to's. I use a lot of LA two A's, which you know uh, are just great, just great go-to compression. Um, uh, I the Harrison console mm -hmm. is my go-to console for for mixing because it's so similar to the MCI's that I grew up with. Um, like it's it's literally based off of those. So yeah. why not? Well, you know, I have, in my studio, I have actually, I have the same thing. I have the satellite with everything they have. And yeah. but, but in the front end, though, I have the warm audio stuff, which are emulations from LA2As and 1176. And they sound amazing. Yes. They sound amazing. I have the Neve on top, the uh, 1073s. Oh, yeah. We love them. are amazing. They sound great. I mean, I have the, also have the analog thing going in. And then play with the analog emulations in the, on the computer too. And that's what I do the same thing. Somebody asked, your 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 uncles and parents considered themselves songwriters first. Yeah. How do you consider yourself as a musician? You know, probably probably the same way. Uh, just because I feel like um, I feel like in general. There's nothing, um, nothing really exists without the song. Yeah. So even if I didn't write it, let's say I'm doing a session for someone. Let's say you bring me in to, um, to, to play a guitar solo on something or to sing on something as let's sing background vocals. I think if the song sucks, you're not gonna get the best out of me. You're not gonna get the best out of, um, out of my vocal, out of my guitar playing, you know, you, you kind of not. I've sort of, I kind of see myself as a, I guess a songwriter first, and then a, um, and then a producer maybe second, because shaping it is just sort of how my, my brain works. And then after that, you know, um, instrumentalist. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, it's that's, for me, you know, since I don't, I don't, I have written a few songs myself, but that's not my thing. I, I've always, I was always a producer, guitarist first, then producer, and then that came together. And then now right. it's like a mixture of things. I can't separate one from the other at this point in my life. So for me, I am a musician, let's say. When yeah. I sit down to listen to music, I listen with all these different ears at the same time. As a producer, as an arranger, as a composer, as a guitarist, and you know, it just happens naturally, I guess. Well, it, it, and I think too, though, like, again, I think how you learn to play is, um, is pivotal to that. I'm, I'm sort of with you nowadays where I think that all of it's sort of really kind of intertwined, mm -hmm. but I do think like a good example is what, is what I just worked on with, um, 
with Samantha, which is um, when, um, you know, when we were writing, and, it, and we, didn't, we didn't have this conversation def specifically, but because of the way we both think, and a mm -hmm. lot of it, I think, comes from how our family thinks, uh, is that you want to write a song that, that will still sound good if it's just the two of you performing it with two guitars. Um, that that's really important or you can have orchestra or you can have other instruments so you can do it big you can do it medium you can do it small and if you really think about some of the best songs of all time they were songs that were written for um, uh, or songs that were that were interpreted differently by different artists and many mm -hmm. of the stuff that my family wrote were, were like that I mean to love somebody is being covered by country artists R&B artists folk yep. artists yep. you name it um, how can you mend a broken heart? Like, you know, you, there is, so a good song is a good song is a good song. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really, and I like, um, uh, I like, I still like to think in those terms and think about the idea that my song still works if I'm just playing it for you at the piano or yep. on the guitar. You know, it's funny, you mentioned that. Um, maybe we are old school at this point, maybe, but, that's the way I think. And I tell my students exactly the same thing. A lot of the kids now, they just go for, you know, loops and stuff and all those sounds, even before they write the song. Right. So me, sure, I know a lot. And yeah, I, I know a lot of people who do that. And now that being said, I think a lot of people were doing that back, like when I was a kid in the oh, yeah. 80s, yeah. they were doing yeah. that. A lot of people were doing that, I remember. We have like the they have their, to do it, yeah. Yeah, they had the Korg M1 or, mm -hmm. you know, and they just start to make, or they set up loops and they'd sort of build a song from that and yep. probably no, no one ever played it. What I tell my students is, my, especially my, my producer, the music production class, is if you can play your song with a guitar or piano only, yes. and it's, it stands, then you have a good song that you can actually arrange and produce. And it would be a lot easier to produce if it's a good song in the first place. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I, I, yeah, I agree with that straight up. And I think you're, and if it is a good song, chances are your chord progressions are actually going to be a lot simpler, you know, because that's just, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, there's, there's, um, you know, some of the best stuff can only have like, you know, like, like there's there's one song um, uh, uh, for uh, for the Ghost Winds record where um, this is actually a cute story. Um, we were finishing a third song, and uh, I'm we had we had separated. Samantha and I had separated, and she was upstairs at her house writing, uh, actually with the guitar, and I was. Uh, downstairs she has a basement I was locked in her basement with a piano and <laughs> I locked myself in I'm not gonna throw Sam under the bus for that um, but I was down there I was down there working um, working on an idea basically it was like well, let's come up with two separate ideas and when I this is how creepy the thing was tying in with ghosts I go up to see I've got an idea I go up to see her, she's like, I've got an idea. So I'm like, all right, play me your idea. So she plays it. And my idea as a melody works as a chorus for her verse. <laughs> check it out. No, but not only is it amazing, check it out. Same two chords as her oh verse. I just had a completely different melody. That song has just two chords in the whole song, except for the bridge. That's it. They just they play at a slightly different rhythm when it gets to the chorus. <laughs> but it's right. the same two chords. And, right. and you'd never, you'd never notice. You, like, you could give it, you give that song to someone and they would probably struggle to figure out what the chords are because they wouldn't think it's just the same two chords. And That's I think cool. a lot, a, a lot of people miss that when it comes to writing. Um, you know, the, the production elements you have on that album are, they are tasty and well put together. Thank you so much. It was, it, yeah, it was, definitely was a lot of a lot of work in that. And again, a process of elimination. We did track a lot of extra stuff, and then, um, you know, a conversation that we ended up having a lot towards the end was, we love this part, but 
um, that's either getting in the way of the strings or the brasses or or it's getting in the way of the vocals and the important, and that, that was something that we needed to keep coming back to. Um, uh, and, and Samantha was really like hardcore of reminding me of that because when I'm mixing, I'm starting to see uh, the whole picture as if I'm not the artist. And then she would come to me and be like, I love what you're doing, but remember at the end of the day, we're like this vocal duo. So the vocals need to be like really important and that sort of does tie in with our family mm -hmm. where it's like where it's like yeah you'd listen to some of those some of their most iconic records there's some great productions in there there's some great string arrangements there's some great instrumentation but the vocals never suffer in the mix it's still always about the vocals and everything mm -hmm. else is kind of a little bit of window dressing unless yep. it's like a drum unless it's like a drum groove um you know uh so um, it's, it's definitely important to remember that stuff when you've got like a, a vocal group. Um, and, and, and as a result, it's one of the, um, it's one of the hardest, definitely one of the hardest mixes I've ever done. One of the most challenging, uh, challenging things. But, and as a result, it's great to have, um, you know, the extra set of ears yeah. across, the, across the country. That, that always can, helps. Uh, now a lot of a lot of us work now isolated by you know by default but it's great yeah. always great to have another set of ears to listen to your music after the fact yeah and usually i mean when i do my own solo stuff i always have a co-producer for certain things for that reason but with this it was you know samantha in in uh uh in ohio uh, as the other half of the group and then you know laz in florida you know, who'd, who'd get, get his, put, get his two cents in, um, you know, especially when you're just really fatigued and you think that, you know, you, you think you might've pushed, because someone told you you need more vocal, mm -hmm. you could push it, you could push it up too much. Um, yeah. or you pull it down too much because you suddenly, because you're like, Oh, I like that guitar riff. I want that to breathe a little more. Um, so you, um, you know, you, you've got to find your, your healthy balance um, and you know and then and, and that could be with anything I mean there's one song where there was um, when Laz had done some of his mixed tweaks by the time I got it into the Neve um, uh, there was this Tom hit right at the beginning of the song that really exploded or almost sounded like an explosion and it didn't sound like that on his his final mix. It sounded like that on mine, but I really liked it. I thought it was really really cool. Um, I thought I did think it could come back a little bit, but I didn't. I, I wanted to see if Sam and Laz thought that first, and Laz came back and he's like, "Yeah, I think that should come down like at least a dB," and sure enough, did it. And it was it was right. So there were little, there were little decisions like that where I'm just like I'm not touching this. I'm leaving that to mm -hmm. other people because because um, not only w does your brain get shot, but also um, it didn't matter to me one way or the other. Like that's yeah. the thing. If, if they you know like you, you've got to make the executive decisions, like the hard decisions. If someone says oh that tom's too loud, bring it down. If you don't care if it comes down. If if someone says, "Oh, I love it," great. It's not. It's yep. not killing the song. It's not interfering with the vocal. It's not. You know. Definitely. So, you know. It's funny. I mean, we are almost done, so we can go to the. Um, you, you can go. Home, you can go and do your thing, and we can go to the giveaway. But you know, I mean, when I do when I mix music for other people, I mix quick. I do it. You know, I make decisions quick. When I mix my own music takes a little more time to say oh that hell yeah, absolutely absolutely 100 percent. no it's, it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game and especially if you you're the songwriter mm -hmm. and you know and and the singer and um and guitarist a keyboard player you know like oh yeah it's it's you know yeah you can send me a song tomorrow i told you i'll have a mix for you in a day and a half Yep. You know, especially if you maybe give me a little reference as to what you, what flavor you want it to have. But yeah, my own stuff, like 
Fuck that. <laughs> and that's why I, when it's my own stuff, I like, I like to have another engineer. I am there helping, but I yes. like to have somebody else doing the actual thing. Because it, yeah. it goes quicker. <laughs> well, you can, and, you, and that's why I take time with it too, because I can let my ears breathe. And then also I'll bring in, again, my studio partner, Jeff. He's also a producer and drummer and bass player. So he's usually the guy that will come in. And, and, and if, I, if I'm getting killer drum sounds, he's the first guy to tell me. Or if he thinks my snare is like on the weak side and it's time for me to go home and go to bed, then, then he's right. I trust him. It's like, all right. And I'll just tell him, you know. And, and a lot of times he knows my ear. He'll be like, yeah, man, there's something going on at 6K in that, uh, uh, in that snare. I won't even touch it, but I'll make a note. And then the next morning, I'll open the Harrison, I'll play around 6K, and sure enough, he'll usually be right. Yep. yep. You, you know, know it, that's the way it is. I mean, many of, a lot of you are not producers and don't work in the in a recording studio in the way we do, and, you know, making songs and making records. And it's a, a challenging, it's taxing on your yes. you know, psyche. It's it's a lot. It's a lot of things when you, especially when it's your own music, your own arrangements, all that stuff that you want to. It's a baby. It's like having a baby every time. Yeah. And there are so many moving parts and so many frequencies. I mean, I, I do think there's a reason it's called engineering, not just because back in the day people wore lab coats, but because you're juggling all of these frequencies. It's very similar to building a space station. Mm -hmm. One thing goes wrong. I mean. The liability isn't there. People, no one's going to die, but there are all of these moving parts that make the perfect thing. Yeah. Um, yep. And and when one thing does go wrong, you've lost the li you've lost the listener. They're not with you anymore. Yep. You know. And that's so happening happen even faster now than before. Oh hell yeah! Absolutely. People want want everything in this amount of time before you get to the yeah. to the chorus. Let's say they oh, want oh, to hear things there. Totally. I also think that's one of the reasons why so much stuff sounds like each other is because there's a lot of fear going into production. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's better to be safe than it is to say, uh, lay something fresh on you. Yep. You know, um, and, and, and that's, you know, that's, you know, that's important. Um, yep. But all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you let get to the giveaway. Um, let's talk again real soon. Um, and well, I'd love to do another one of these when your new season comes up. Well, I'd, I'd love to have you and Sam actually. Next we time. we would both love we would both love to do it. And um, my, my idea is, you know, now since I started classes again, I can't do it every Thursday. But sure. my plan is maybe to do once a month or so or something, and call it, you know, the season will be longer. But it's 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 probably what I'm going to do. So I'll let you know for sure. Oh yeah, we're totally down, and we'll keep you. Uh, We'll keep you posted on um, uh, on release dates and stuff, so we can schedule things. Please do, man. I love you. You know that. Hope to see you soon Me again, too. in person. And you know. And please give give my love to uh, anyone that's uh, that you run into up there that I know. Um, I, I know everyone's, everyone's distant, but you know. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you very soon, brother. Take care, brother. Thank, and thank you everyone for being a part of this and um uh yeah uh, i hope i didn't um uh well i, I whatever bye <laughs> take care <laughs> bye. see you soon <laughs>